Hey guys, what's going on? It's me, Will Patterson, here again with another video, and today we are gonna be critiquing some awesome logo designs that you have submitted yourselves. This video is brought to you by Squarespace. With that being said, I just wanted to give a little announcement. I've told a few people, I've made a couple of little tweaks about it here and there in different videos, but I'm gonna be doing a new playlist on this channel and I wanna hear your thoughts about it. I'm gonna be doing a playlist called Tech for the Designers and it was inspired by another YouTuber who I'll link down below. But I'm gonna be taking you through all the tech that I use and any other tech that could be beneficially helpful for any of you. I will stop talking now and I'll get into the logo critiques because I've got a few more ideas I'm gonna throw at you at the end, so stay tuned to the end. Okay, so this first logo looks awesome. I'm gonna look at the brief right here. It's from Derek and he says, hello, my name is Derek. I'm from Cameroon. I don't know where that is, but good on you. I'm a big fan of your work and I love your YouTube channel. Here's a logo I designed for a photography studio. Uh, do a crit on it. Okay, so this is for a photography studio. Okay, so easy pictures, photography studio. I like the sort of name of that. The first thing that jumps out to me here is that this illustration has a really nice minimalistic effect to it, but it is not yet finished. How do I know this? Well, I always look at these videos or these critiques in the eyes of a client because I've worked with so many different clients. I know the questions that they ask and someone who's a good designer knows their clients very well. And the reason why it's not finished is because you've got some things in here that I would suggest aren't looking too good. Uh, I like the overall aspect of it. You can see it here. It looks pretty decent. You've got easy pictures down here. Then you've got your camera here, which looks good. You've also got your hands on there and you've done a pretty good negative space logo design here. The only issue that I see is this thumb here kind of looks translucent. I think you need to uh, change the thumbnail, literally the thumbnail. Um, and also the camera doesn't have any shine or glare in it. It looks matte and that's because you haven't added any negative shape stuff here. The next logo is from Abel, and he says that this is a deep sea fishing group team that fishes for yellow fin tunas and marlins. Okay, so you've got this logo here. Let's have a look. Billing time, Orange Beach AL. Okay, so the first thing that jumps out to me to this logo is I really like the sort of shapes you've got going on here. Looks really nice. I like the actual type you've got going on here as well. It's kind of like a block. It's, it's what's known as copper plate, I believe. It's not actually the Spencerian type of, um, uh, what's it called, cursive script, but copper plate is a proper, you know, typing into copper. The actual type fits really well into the logo because it's kind of got that heritage feel, but with the modern twist, with the edginess of the fish that you've got there. My only concern though is that it could be too complicated um, with all these different shades and stuff. I think you've done a really good job here as you've picked out the fish that they primarily fish for in the team. And you've also got the color combination there, really nice with the blues and the greens. I really like it. One thing that sticks out to me though is why nothing is uh, orange, since they've got an orange name in there. Um, that's the only thing. I like the color combo, but maybe adding orange to it may be cool. This next one is from Daniel and he says, Hi Will, this is my first attempt at creating a logo design. Please critique it. Thank you so much. Love your work and your videos. Thank you so much, Daniel. Okay, so here is your logo here. So this is Pieces, I believe it's pronounced with Seafood Restaurant. Okay, so the cool thing about this logo is that it's a very simple monogram icon with fish inside of it, right? You can see the fish and it's completely symmetrical and it looks awesome. I really like this. Uh, the only thing that I would actually change with this is maybe uh, the, the uh, typeface you've got going on here for the second duo and also this one here. Maybe this could be a bit bolder. Restaurants don't normally have a modern uh, technological look to it. This looks very much like a tech company logo. And I know it looks good and you're trying to go for the modern look. Even changing the typeface of this can have a major impact in the way that it's perceived by the customer. The only place that I would see this being like a, a good logo is for a highly modern seafood restaurant, kind of like a sushi place where people are getting them on conveyor belts. I really want to go there, but I wouldn't try any of the fish. Here's another look at the logo with some uh, white space behind it, and it looks really good there as well. You've got hierarchy going on in a weird order though. Uh, I would insist on creating or making the pieces seafood restaurant part bigger 
uh, and decreasing or keeping the size of that the same. You want the PCS Seafood Restaurant to be seen first because people need to know what the icon means. And because as soon as they know what the icon means, they can go ahead and remember it when they see the icon again in a magazine or something. But I think you've done such a really good job here. The seafood style of it looks really nice. I love the fish icons that you've got going here, the symmetry of it and the differences between it. It's super simple, super elegant. One thing I like to keep in mind when I'm working for companies is the simpler the logo, the more easier it is to remember. And I always test this out. Is the logo that I'm creating able to be drawn out? I don't mean all the little technical aspects of it, but can they get the general shape? Can they identify with it and can they remember it? These are the sort of checklists that you need. But really good job though, dude. I really like your design right there. Okay, so this next one is from Alejandro and he is starting as a freelance graphic designer. I don't know how old you are, dude, but it's good that you're starting out in this journey. It's gonna be a fun one for you. Now, I'm gonna be brutally honest with this one. Seeing how you're starting as a designer or as a freelance designer, I'm gonna be brutally honest and say, get rid of this logo. You do not need this one. That's not me being nasty. It's me offering you a solution. This logo doesn't actually offer me anything to do with design, really. I'll point out a few things that you can change with this, but I would go ahead and create a totally different version of this firstly the actual quality part is not looking quality enough it looks too rustic and too vintage uh, and the letter forms aren't correctly spaced and yeah i like the q in it that looks really nice and the flourish on the y and the t's look really good the other problem here is it says quantity uh, because you've got a uh, you know the actual crossbar there on the T going through or on the L. Also, I know this is hand drawn, but you've actually got some tight faces in there as well, which don't really fit with the overall design. If this is really small, all I could see was quality, and although that could work sometimes, you want to make sure that these are working correctly as well. And also, I'm very confused as to why you've got a, a diamond shape in the background. You don't actually need them. Now with logo design, the number one thing to remember is simple, simple, simple. It has to be simple. Even when you're going through a retro sort of logo design for an apparel company, has to be simple. I'll show you mine. Something that I don't talk about a lot on my channel is my logo design that I use that you can only really see in certain areas of my channel and stuff. And that's because I want people to be focused on my work, not my logo. Here's my Squarespace website here that I have all my client work on and it's got a video of me in the background and stuff like that. But here is my logo dead in the center. Now this is very rustic looking logo, but it's very simple. It is just the William Patterson in the center and it shows exactly what I'm about in a very easy fashion. And you know, this logo only took me less than 10 seconds to make on a piece of paper and a fountain pen. This shows people what I'm about. I'm a hand letterer, a logo designer, and I love to make content. And when people come on the website, they see this logo, they'll remember it because it tells them my name anyway. And you see the difference between that and this one is that although I do like the cue and certain elements of this, it's not going to work. Quality doesn't speak to me here in this design. It isn't a quality design yet. There's a lot of stuff you need to do. What I would suggest to do is create a different version of this logo where you just have quality designs and maybe have them both in script fashion. So this next one's from Carlos and he says, this is a business for electromechanical engineering and this is the logo for it. So go faster. And this is the logo here. Now the first thing I can tell straight away is get rid of that orange. You do not need the orange in that logo in my opinion. I really, what I really like is the center part here. We go faster. You've chosen a really strong typeface and you've also got these strong bold lines there. I would even increase those line thicknesses a little bit so they are just the same as the actual type there, so the same thickness. I'd also increase the leading in between this block of text here uh, further down and increase the tracking or scale of it so it fits properly or get rid of it altogether um, or change the whole concept because otherwise this can make or break it. You wanna make sure this has got enough room to breathe on the paper. So the first thing is, is this mark at the top as well. I would go ahead and make that a bunch smaller so it fits perfectly within the composition. Get rid of the orange. You do not need the orange in there, in my opinion, unless it was asked for for the client. Um, I like the, the word mark, it works really well. The only other issue that I'm seeing here is that these lines in the center 
and the actual all these different lines are different thicknesses you should make them the same thickness so they're consistent all the way through and also these parts here the corners of the horizontal points on the hexagons are touching the other shape on the outside if you just to simplify this down and take those steps that I've just said, then you'll have yourself a pretty nice looking logo. Have you guys noticed a pattern when I do logo critiques? It's mainly me telling you to stop putting things on it and just to leave it because there was one point in this logo where it was perfect and it worked. You know when it's perfect, when it works. And then when we start adding onto them because we think we can do better, then that's when we need to stop. When things get too complicated and when you keep adding stuff to it, that's when you need to stop. Guys, thank you so much for watching this video and a huge shout out to Squarespace. If you don't know, I use Squarespace as my website platform as you're seeing right here. I'm able to put a video in the background of my landing page and give people options to go to my shop email me, look at more of what I do, check out my portfolio and look at my blog. There's so much you can do on Squarespace and they support this channel. If you want 10% off Squarespace, then go ahead and click that link in the description below and show your appreciation to them for sponsoring the channel. But before we go, I'm gonna give you a little more hint as to what's going on in the channel. So I've talked a lot recently about changing the channel up this year and this is the way that it's going to go. I'm gonna start doing tech videos on this channel alongside design videos, whether that's critiquing or hand lettering. So I want a tech playlist for tech for designers uh, where I show you all the tech that I'm doing uh, in my day-to-day -day life and in my job and stuff. I'm also thinking about showing you projects behind the scenes of what I'm doing on this channel in a separate playlist but I also want your feedback on what you would like to see on this channel. But if you have any other ideas of what video series you would like to see, not just single videos, but video series that you would like to see, then let me know down in the comment section below. I would appreciate you guys telling me what you think and uh, what we can do with that. But guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I'm talking really fast, but I'll catch you in the next one. See you soon.